Welcome back. Thank you for staying with the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. A family of three is homeless after a New Year's Eve fire at Pave Castries. The fire is said to have started at about 8 p.m. The raging inferno consumed the two-bedroom structure that housed two parents and their teenage child. The St. Lucia Fire Service responded with two fire trucks and an ambulance. No injuries were reported. Though the 2020 ASU Square activity was by many accounts a major success, Mayor of Castries, Peterson Francis, says the activity has long lost several key cultural aspects which allowed it to stand out from other fairs or quote-unquote blockos. Shaka Wooding tells us more. As the head of ASU Square activities, the Castries Constituency Council has received much praise for another successful event. Clear advancements have been made in several key areas, such as patron safety, crowd control and entertainment variety, resulting in a holistically better quality event. However, Castries Mayor Peterson Francis says this year the CCC missed the mark in ensuring the cultural authenticity of the event. He says current day ASU Square is a far cry from the traditional concept. One of the things that is still bothering me is that I believe we have to be more cultural. We have to bring people in our age group knows about what it is coming up to square. Knowing toes, knowing pipe banana, knowing the other activities. So I would like in the rest of my term, uh, I, I, I'm supposed to be there longer anyhow. <laughs> Francis says discussions have already begun with stakeholders to ensure that this can be rectified in anticipation of 2021 activities. We'll try to bring in our own culture. We have to sell it out. And I must say, I'm, I'm very thankful for Hot 7 coming on board this year. And actually, we could actually show people who are not here. Because you know, we're only concerned about who could come here and spend. But what about the people who grew up in this city? which square means a lot to them, okay? We could reach their homes now, they could see. Find some of them are not even crying because of the memories that they get to, okay? So we are looking forward to that next year. He commended all stakeholders for an incident-free event and looks forward to a year of safety, cleanliness, and prosperity in the city of Castries. For 7 News, I am Jacqueline. Post ASU Square 2020, we hit the streets to find out the views of you, members of the public, on the success of ASU Square celebrations.
Prime Minister Alan Shasti says his administration has taken notice of the efforts of various communities in Denry, Trizel and Ansari as they spearheaded their very own Asu Square festivities. On site at Castries Asu Square, he attributed much of the success to the excitement built by the communities. So in my own constituency on Boxing Day, um, we did a, a major event down there. And I think that once you experience it and you see who's coming, so for instance, a lot of the people from my constituency that live in the diaspora, and they get to come home and there's an event like that in which they can see everybody, it really is fantastic. And I'm happy to see that Denry and Choiseul and some of the other constituencies are also doing something. So I think it's great and that's it's a tribute to the success of Asu Square here in Castro. The Prime Minister says these initiatives are a testament to the growth of St. Lucia's orange economy on the grassroots level. He says 2020 will see greater government involvement in ensuring the development and continuity of cultural displays in all communities. Now, on the international front, Iran's supreme leader has vowed severe revenge on those responsible for the death of a top military commander. The commander was killed by an airstrike at Baghdad airport early on Friday. It was ordered by U.S. President Donald Trump. The 62-year-old spearheaded Iran Middle East operations as the head of the elite Quds force. Trump said he killed or wounded thousands of Americans. The killing marks a major escalation in tensions between Washington and Tehran. U.S. officials have said 3,000 additional troops will be sent to the Middle East as a precaution. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said the U.S. wanted to de-escalate the situation, but that the strike was lawful and saved lives. He told Fox News, quote, we do not seek war with Iran, but we will not stand by and see American lives put at risk, end quote. Meanwhile, tens of thousands of Iranians have been holding rallies in Tehran and other cities denouncing what they call U.S. crimes. The Denry Polyclinic has been viewed by some as a costly venture that is plagued with setbacks. In 2018, work on the $13.74 million facility came to an abrupt stop mere months after the initial sword turning ceremony. The 18-month timeline originally outlined for the completion of the polyclinic did not materialize. Minister for Economic Development Guy Joseph, in a one-on-one -on -one sit down interview with Hot 7 TV, says the project consultant for the project, led by Managing Director Edward Lewis, delivered crushing news to him about the progress of the facility. We have started the Denry Polyclinic. Again, because of the bad designs that we inherited, the project had to be um, terminated for the time being or stopped, and we had to go back to the drawing board to redo what I was told could not be done. So I'm giving an example. When I came in and I said, can we review what is being proposed as the Denry Polyclinic? And I was told, no, it has gone through all of the processes. Um, if we try and do that, they will say that's political interference, so you need to proceed with the project. It was approved by the Ministry of Health. It was approved by um, the, the agencies responsible, so you need to proceed with the project. I said, okay, we went out to tender. The project started. Within one month of starting the project, the consultant on the project said to me, I would rather walk away from this project than to be the one associated with this badly designed project. I asked him, what do you mean? And he said it in a meeting with all the parties present. He said, if you continue with this project, this is going to be a Saint Julie, referring to it as another disaster of what Saint Julie is. The minister says the consultant was willing to give up the contract rather than be associated with what he described as the poorly designed plans for the facility. I would simply say to them, we got a bad design. If we had proceeded with it, it would be a dysfunctional facility. So we had to go back to the drawing board, which has now resulted in a over 30% increase because of the redesign and the World Bank, which is funding the project, is saying that we are not sure that we can fund the additional. 
So the government now may have to find the additional 30% of the money if the project is to continue as is. But do you see the situation that this puts the administration in? Because all of these things are happening behind the scenes. But for the citizenry, a lot of them see, bottom line is we voted a UWP government into office to fix these things. Um, is, is it a consideration that perhaps the administration may have to just bite the bullet and, and move forward with at least one of these projects. I, I understand the concerns, but given the reaction, all of the comments being made on the ground, the picture really has been painted that the government is just ineffective and not making progress on the healthcare sector. Well, it is possible that a lot of people can conclude this. Healthcare is always a matter of life and death. And you have only one chance to get it right. When you get it wrong, it costs lives. And at the end of the day, if we are elected, we are elected to do the right thing. And doing the right thing always comes at a cost. It comes at a cost of time, it comes at a cost of money, and it may even come at the cost of your future elections. But which one is more important? Doing the right thing or being elected and doing the wrong thing? Now, I would rather be associated with doing the right thing, even if the people choose to vote me out at the next election. I would rather know that I am voted out doing the right thing than to be voted in doing the wrong thing. The minister said despite the setbacks, the power is all in the hands of the voting public to make their determination. He said he has very little fear or concerns over his re-election. This is the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. Stay with us. There's more news coming up after the break.